Hello, people. Thanks for joining me. I'm Scotty D, and I've got this brand new Yamaha Revstar. It's in for scratchy frets, and this is the second one this month that's come in with the same problem. Every fret, they forgot to polish them. And the factory in Indonesia where these are coming from, um, I bought a guitar recently, the old um, Sire Telecaster shaped one there that was all messed up too. Their quality control, they just can't handle all the guitars that are they're pumping through this factory. They're excellent guitars, they're designed well, and they're beautiful, but if they put someone on the inspection desk who actually plays guitars, they might be able to catch some of these these problems because uh, if you have experience playing, they're easy to catch. But if you don't know what you're doing on a guitar, you could let it slip right through. I think you can actually see the scratches in the frets here on this job. Um, and today, I'm going to be using products from the paint supply aisle. Anybody can get these. I'm not going to use any power tools or fancy equipment today. It's all going to be basic stuff that you, you would use if you were doing household paint painting jobs, stripping furniture, that kind of stuff. So, we'll get started in a minute. I want to show you what was wrong with my sire. Okay, see here on the peg head how these two posts are taller than these? Well, what happened was I got these two strings through the hole, but when I got over here to the, to the D string, the G, the B, and the E, I couldn't get the string through the hole because this washer here was too thick. So I had to remove the nuts, get a different set of tuners with a thinner washer, and replace the washers on these. I just went and replaced all six, actually. So I swapped out the, with some thinner washers to solve the problem there. There was another problem I'll show you. So this is the way it's supposed to be. Position one, neck humbucker. Position two, single coil. Position three, both humbuckers. Position four, both single coils. Position five, bridge humbucker. What I was getting in position five was both humbuckers. So here and here, I was getting the exact same sound, both humbuckers. I was not getting the isolated bridge humbucker, which is about 15K ohms resistance. Um, I plugged a output jack and wired it up to my resistance meter and I knew for certain that was the problem and I told Chicago Music Exchange about the problem and they couldn't help me. They couldn't come up with a wiring diagram and they were of no help at all. They wanted to help but they couldn't because the factory could not produce a wiring diagram to help me out. So this is how I fixed it. I took one look at this super switch and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, why is this happening to me? Because there are a lot of connectors there. But what I could see... I don't know if you can see, but... Look down in here. There's a little wiper that comes across. I'm moving the switch now. But there's a little wiper that comes across and it hits these five different lugs. So this one's on the neck, this one's position two, this one's both, this one's bridge single coil, or both single coils, and this one's the bridge. So I came in and started desoldering connections from these lugs here until my DC resistance reading read 15 K ohms or kilo ohms when I was in position five. And I just, I basically had to just leave the switch in position 5. I didn't have to go moving the switch back and forth like that. I just left it in 5 and I kept my eye on the meter as I lifted off the wires. And the first wire I lifted, I got my reading of 15 kilo ohms, so it was fixed. So the other Sire Larry Carlton guitar that came in with a problem was different than mine. It was, he would play it when he bent the arm down and it wouldn't come back to zero. Like his G would come back and it would be 
G flat by 10 cents or something. Or he would go up and it would stay up. So, turns out, at the factory, they spray this thick polyester finish. And sometimes it gets in here, there's a, there's a route into the body right here for the tremolo block to go down into, and there's some springs and stuff inside. But this, this polyester had built up a thickness around the edges, and it was rubbing right here on this side. And uh, it was causing friction, and it wasn't allowing this thing to float properly. So I had to disassemble everything, get in there with a file, and uh, smooth everything over, and remove some of this poly, and put it all back together for them, and, and get them all fixed up. So, again, it's a quality control thing where the guy on the, the inspection guy at the end of the line should play the guitar. He should use the whammy bar, he should hook it up, the electronics up to a meter and get a readings and make sure they're what the designer uh, designed this guitar to, how it, they designed it to function, and make sure that the person in the electronics didn't screw up, or the guy that sprayed the finish didn't spray the finish too thick. And that might be what they did on my peg head too, is they just sprayed the finish too thick, and that's why those washers seemed too thick, and I couldn't get the strings through the, the holes. So let's get started with the rev star. I use a neck rest. You don't have to. You can use a, a, a pillow or a book or whatever. Uh, peg winders, not necessary, but I'm going to use one for demonstration. It's going to make things faster. And uh, masking tape would be something I'm going to use today. I don't normally use it in my regular everyday guitar maintenance, repair, and restoration business. But for demonstration purposes and for the the do-it-yourselfer on YouTube who wants to do this at home, I'm going to use masking tape and regular sandpaper and these Scotch-Brite pads. Make sure you don't accidentally drop any of this stuff on the guitar body or the back of the neck because the back of the neck the back of the neck can be scratched up easily by these products. But we only want to get them on the frets today. I just want to say one thing about Sweetwater, a company that I love. The guy they put on the inspection line, who does their 50-point inspection, he doesn't know how to play guitar, I guess, because he would have caught this if he would have picked the guitar up and played it. So these products are 220 grit through 2000 grit sandpapers and Scotch-Brite pads. This is the coarse Scotch-Brite pad. I'm going to use it after the 320 and before the 400. And the gray Scotch-Brite pad I'm going to use in between the 1,000 and 1,200 grit. I'll take that back. Sorry about what I said about him not knowing how to play guitar. He might know how to play classical guitar or something. Because, you know, on nylon string guitars, they don't polish those frets on nylon string guitars, classical guitars. They don't bend the strings like a shredder or a blues man might bend. But... Us headbangers, we like to bend on the strings when we're doing our solos. And we require polished frets, smooth as a baby's butt. They have to be smooth like a baby's butt. Some guys say, Just play the guitar, man. It'll smooth over after a while. These are stainless steel. All your strings are going to break before this, these stainless frets get polished by bending your strings and just playing it. Sorry. Maybe I'm wrong. I, 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 I don't know. I just wouldn't want to go through the torture of playing a guitar with scratchy sandpaper frets for any period of time. Especially if I paid $900 and Sweetwater claims to put it through an inspection. And you know it's a company that you can trust. And then you call them up and there's nothing they can do. You know, it slipped through. There's nothing they can do. I'm going to try to cut that tape away from the fret right there with, these, uh, with this exacto uh, blade. And a little more taping here. Oh, that worked putting on the oversized piece of tape and then slicing it slicing it off. 
You just do each one as I go. Seems to work okay. Also want to tape off your pickup and maybe some of the yeah you probably want to you can de-stick the tape on your t-shirt or your jeans so that when you peel it off it doesn't damage the, the poly. It looks like the pick guard plastic is still on so it probably wouldn't matter too much if I hit that with sandpaper. Brand new guitar. I cut the Scotch Bright down to a more reasonable size, and I place it right on top of the grit that it that it goes before. Because if you skip any of these grits or the Scotch Bright, you might not come back with uh, very good results. Next thing I do is I take a little squirt bottle, and I just get a slight mist of water on my gloves. And that makes it tacky. And then I take the sandpaper. And I just go across the press this way. Kind of obliquely. Slightly oblique. You kind of want to hit the side of each fret too. The scratches were going this way from the pluck machine which is kind of a robotic tool they use to level the frets. They can understaff the factory, the more automated machines they have. CNC's, they have pluck machines, but it takes a human being to inspect the guitar and polish the frets. And you may have been shorthanded or something. Like a CNC machine can probably cut a beautiful sculpture out of granite or something, but if you want it polished to the highest smoothness, shininess, you're going to have to get in there by hand. There's no machine that can do this kind of thing that I know of. Just as an insurance that all these sandpapers are working the way they should. I'm going to do this one fret right to the end with all eight sandpaper grits and scotch Bright pads. And you'll notice one other thing. Every grit says P in front of it. That's, that's the grading system they use on sandpaper. There's two grading systems, and you'll want to make sure that all the different grits that you get are all the same grade. And just to make things easy, buy P grade sandpaper. They all say P in front of them. And that means they're all consistent. And if you switch down to C grade somewhere in the center, you'll actually take like five steps back and screw up the whole job. Okay. Last I do the steel wool. It's the double lot steel wheel wool. Uh, four zeros. I don't know why we call it double lot. Double lot steel wool. And then I take a leftover piece of guitar string and just run it across like this. Hear the difference? Yeah. Now you can see the difference. This one's been polished all the way up to 2000 grit with double lot steel wool. And this one's still at the 220 grit stage. I just realized I lied when I said you have to go this way. You don't have to. You can go this way, too. Um, I actually like to hold the sandpaper kind of like that, too. It, uh, it causes less fatigue in my hand muscle when I keep my knuckles straight like this. You can go any which way you want. Steel is not like wood where it has a grain. 
and you want to go with the grain. Or like a dog where you don't want to go with the grain, <laughs> the way his hair is growing this way. <laughs> Pet the dog sideways. <laughs> it doesn't matter with steel. Steel, you can go any which way you want, both ways. This is the coarse scotch Bright. I do that after the 320 grit. I want to I want to do it for a while. I want to make it. I want to really get in there. This will hit the frets on the uh, sides of the frets. So you don't want to just get the tops of the frets. You want to get the sides of the frets. So I'm up to 400. You can even rotate it like that so you're hitting with fresh paper. It's all about keeping it fresh. I know one guy that likes to alternate. He'll go this way with the 400. And then he'll, when he's ready for 600, he'll go this way. So I've decided after a while it really doesn't matter. But he's, he's one of those guys that wants to make everything look really good on Instagram. So that might be part of it. He, plus his eyesight might be a lot better than mine. I just go by feel because I can't see anymore. But I can hear better now that I'm blind. No, I'm not really blind. I just can't see details. I'm all the way up to the gray scotch bright. I definitely like to do the scotch bright in this direction because I feel like it gets in between each fret better and hits the side of each fret. And sorry for ragging on those guitar factories and guitar retailers today. I usually don't mention people and mind my own business, but we could do better and sometimes sometimes it takes criticism before people start changing. So again, it, it doesn't make me feel good to, to complain about Chicago Music Exchange, Sweetwater, or the Court Factory in Indonesia. I, I love their products. And they do a good job. And I buy stuff from them, so they're not losing my business. But they should be mindful of who they place, you know, their management. It's all about management. Who are they getting to work? I know sometimes people call out sick and someone has to fill their spot. And their mistakes can be made, and things get through the the chain. And, you know, this guitar should have got rejected at the factory and sent back into the polishing station. Because these are stainless steel. On a nickel silver fret job, you wouldn't need to start with 220 grit to polish them. You could start a little higher. 400 if you want. Probably be adequate. I like to start with 320 because I'm usually... I'm usually doing um, fret level recrown and polish jobs, which leave a lot of harsh scratches in the fret tops. And the crowning process, the crowning files and stuff, I don't get too anal about the shape of each crown, so the 320 grit, using 320, homogenizes the shape of each crown a lot better for me. So, we're almost done. Maybe come in with a cut-off piece of string. And Rub it on each fret.
to make sure you don't have any burrs or scratchiness. Something does feel scratchy. I don't know if that string is... If I've used it for... Sometimes I use strings for getting glue into little cracks. And there might be some residue on this one. Next I'll vacuum. I mentioned how I don't use tape anymore as a regular day-to-day -day thing on guitar fretboards, and that's because um, these antique restorations I do, if a little piece of tape gets down on the, the edge here and hits that lacquer, it can pull the finish right off the edge of the neck. And it's happened. I, I'm telling you because we've had some catastrophes over here. And I've had to refinish some necks, which will really set you back. Plus, I've got a system now with the fret guards and things where stainless steel fret guards, you can get those from Sweetwater, Music Nomad, fret shields. Um, I'll, show you, I'll show you one in a minute. By the time I taped off this board, I could already be completely done with the job. It's just so much faster. And of course, you know, the faster you get things done, the more profit you make. And the more time you can spend with your kids or petting the dog or watching a movie. Or playing guitar. How about that? Less time working on guitars, more time playing them. Okay, still got my gloves on because the last step is I'm going to do some cleaning. I use naphtha, lighter fluid just like Jimi Hendrix because it's safe for all finishes um, if, obviously most people don't keep this around so you can also use isopropyl alcohol but if you do use isopropyl which I've got some right here you might want to use like the 70 something percent that they sell 90 percent and 70 percent and just be real careful that you don't drip any down the edges onto the fretboard and stuff because you're if you're doing this on a guitar that has a nitro finish alcohol can soften that finish and leave um, it can mar it up pretty bad notice the alcohol some of the oils from the rosewood are leaching out into the paper towel now that I'm using the alcohol on there so that's drying out the wood it's, uh, those are the oils from the wood I'm robbing the fretboard of its oil. So next, we'll hydrate the board with the lemon oil. You can use Old English lemon oil. You can use straight up mineral oil. Or you can use fancy Dunlop fretboard oil like this. Most guitar players keep this stuff around. They have guitar polish and fretboard oil on hand. So I like to use a little bit of this Mohawk fingerboard oil has a touch of Danish oil in it and that doesn't wipe right up like the uh, lemon oil, mineral oil stuff. Um, if you're just a, a first timer watching this who wants to do his frets, you might find some mineral oil in the house like under the kitchen sink. They sell it for conditioning your cutting boards in the kitchen. Straight up mineral oil for like if you ever bought a bamboo cutting board, it might be sold with those. I keep I keep it on hand. I keep all five of those oils uh, right here on the bench. So I typically just go right behind this oil with a fresh paper towel and get any excess off the uh, get it off the board right away. Another interesting thing about the Revstar, just like my sire, Larry Carlton, that was made in the same factory, is the five-way super switch. But you'll see something else even more interesting on this guitar. Push-pull pot, 
on the tone knob allows you to uh, switch from humbucker to coil, uh, to single coil, and this inductor when you use it when they have it wired here oh, with a couple capacitors it'll cut specific frequencies um, giving you some very interesting tones so this one push-pull pot here and the selector switch might give you up to ten different tone possibilities Let's plug it in and give it a listen. Push pull on a five way super switch. So you could have up to ten sounds. Start here in position one. So when you pull it out, you get more of a humbucker sound. Position two. series parallel sounds going on. Appreciate you hanging out with me today. I hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll catch you later.